Welcome to GRIT, the Real Estate Growth Mindset Podcast, hosted by Brian Charlesworth, founder of Sisu. Sisu provides growth automation software for real estate. You'll hear stories from real estate thought and technology leaders, team owners, and brokers on how they grew their business in a rapidly changing industry. You'll learn how to transform your brokerage and teams into a high-performing and analytics-driven business so you have a new, durable, competitive advantage against disruption in your market. So let's get right into it. All right. Hi, everyone. Welcome back to the GRIP podcast. I'm Brian Charlesworth. I'm the founder of Sisu and your host of the show. And today we are here with Gary Boomershine. And Gary uh, has been in real estate now since I think 1987, a uh, long time. And for the last uh, 16 years or so, he's been investing in real estate, buying real estate. And uh, we're really excited to have him on the show today. Uh, Gary is actually my first interview since the, the COVID-19 chaos. And uh, I'm really excited, Gary, to learn from you as to, is this a great time for, for our real estate team owners, broker owners, to start diving into this business. But before we get into that, why don't you give us a little more detail on your background? Yeah, super excited, Brian, to be here with your loyal listeners. And I know a lot of, a lot of crazy times, right, um, of sort of what should we all be doing. I love, this, I love this real estate niche because we're all so connected and there's such an opportunity for business owners and entrepreneurs to be sharing uh, what we're doing, how we're adjusting, and uh, kind of grow together because we are in a little bit of unchartered chartered territory. Um, my background, I so it's Gary Boomershine. I run a company called realestateinvestor.com, and uh, we've got about a, about 600 um, agents and in, I should say agent brokerage teams and investors all over the country using um, a combination of our platform and our team. We have a, a group of uh, inside sales agents and uh, um, resources that are experts to basically manage marketing and uh, a lot of the sales activities. Um, yeah, so Gary, on that front, just one of the, a lot of our listeners have heard from Jeff Cohn because Jeff, uh, Jeff is out talking about us pretty frequently. Um, isn't he one of yours as well? Doesn't he work with you guys and utilize your technology there? Or yeah. Oh yeah. I actually just talked to Jeff. I'm in multiple masterminds with him. Good, super good friend. Uh, got to hang out in Omaha with him. We went to the Berkshire Hathaway uh, shareholder meeting together a few months ago. So, Oh really? Yeah. yeah. And he, um, they're, they're, they're in a, he's a, I love Jeff, super sharp guy. Um, he, he is a client of ours. And we have a hybrid model, and I will definitely go into this today. Um, we're finding a lot of agents that, are, that have been seeing this whole iBuyer model and an opportunity to uh, participate in, the, um, you know, in offering more solutions to sellers where you can come in and offer the typical listing, but also at the same time, an instant offer to sellers. And so he's got um, an agent team. I think they did 700 transactions last year on the brokerage side, and then they're buying properties all over the country and we're powering them up. So, um, okay. Yeah, so I, everything they're doing on the investment side or call it iBuyer or whatever that is being done using your systems. Is yeah, it is. And then there's another, do you know, Eric Hatch? Uh, yeah, I do. Yeah. Yeah. So we're firing up, we're using his team. Um, in Fargo has been using us. I actually got, I was with him in Mexico just a few weeks ago and he was giving me some numbers. I think they, we drove 127 uh, seller appointments off of our marketing engine for him and his direct team in Fargo. And he said that um, as of the time I spoke to him, he said they bought 60 houses and at the time they had 160 listings. Um, now was this over like a 12, 12 month period? Was this nine months? Yeah, nine 20, months. Uh, it was a nine month period off of a fairly small amount of marketing. He's in he's in Fargo, so you know every part of the country is going to be a little different, but um, it's been pretty cool. So he's he, what Eric is doing, and a lot of these agents are doing kind of the snap offer approach. That's something that Eric has coined, and the snap offer is where you can come in to the seller and be able to say, hey, we can buy your house 
right now, all cash. Um, or we could list your property and you know, with some improvements, we think we would be able to net you this. And if you did more of the following, more traditional for a retail buyer, you know, we would end up here. And so he said that he's getting about maybe 40% of those uh, transactions he's ending up buying and uh, about 60% are turning into the listings. But mm. what's, n what's nice is it's really the, comp the competitor to the iBuyer institutional, you know, the Zillow, the open door, the offer pad uh, model. And yeah. so we're, we're seeing a lot, of invest a lot of agents doing that. A lot of the top producing agent teams kind of seeing that they need to be more fit for, the, for this new market. And, and also, I'm excited about what's going on with COVID. I shouldn't say excited, right? I'm probably the ultimate optimist on everything. But we're going to see a lot of the institutional investors right now pulling out. So this is a really great opportunity in my, from my perspective for the investors and even more so for the uh, agent teams that for, can actually. Mm -hmm. for, for those that don't know, I mean, maybe share with us. This got started, iBuyer, right back in Phoenix years ago. And now some of the companies that were the original founders of this, do you want to come maybe set the, the, uh, just the stage here, but they're backing out now, right? They're no longer making investments. Yeah. Um, Zillow, Zillow just announced. So I buyer is, is really an instant buyer. It's being able to uh, where a seller can, instead of going and doing the traditional listing and waiting and having open houses, uh, they can actually get an instant buyer. And so Zillow, and there's, uh, I, I believe the last, right before this COVID announcement, there was over $3 trillion coming in. Um, in fact, and what we were seeing uh, definitely on the investor side is price, uh, massive price competition, where you know, a, an investor, a cash investor might offer 100 grand, and we'd see Zillow come in at like 120 or 127. And Zillow's model was they didn't care about making money now. It was all long term. We've actually, Zillow just announced they're pulling out of that right now. And so we think a lot of, with, with, this, with this turn in the market, uh, we're thinking that a lot of the, tri the, the institutional money is going to be pulled out, just like we saw in 2008 and 2009. But the, in, the, but, but the opportunity is still there. So this is an opportunity in my, in my book and a lot of us uh, for for a massive transition of wealth. Because in all these market turns, there's always been a transition of wealth, right? Um, exactly. And it's like, what side of the curve do we all want to be on? And I, a lot of us are saying, hey, we want to be on the curve of, of, of the opportunity. So yeah. uh, we're, we're also seeing a lot of people that may have been doing rehabbing and rentals are going to have a lot of more price uh, uh, sensitive. They're going to have more pressure right now. And those that are you know, that, that have got cash or access to cash will do very well in this coming market. So a lot of what we do here, Gary, with the, the GRIP podcast, we, we really focus on what can someone who's running a real estate business do? What are some things that a team owner, a broker owner, what could they do to really create wealth? And you said this massive shift right now, right? There's a massive shift of wealth that, that is an opportune time to have that happen. The last time we had this was really in 2008 right. and people either crashed or they took advantage of it and that's when you can gain the most wealth. So let's talk about somebody, I, I know a lot, this is definitely top of mind for the real estate industry. Um, there's no doubt that iBuyers had the biggest impact of anything that's come in to compete with the industry. The iBuyer has had the biggest impact on taking market share. Right. Correct. And I think a lot of people fought it for so long. A lot of people have jumped in and joined that now. But if I haven't done that yet, what's the best way to do that? You know, how much money? I mean, I've got so many questions. How much money do I need to invest on a monthly basis? You were talking a little bit ago about, um, you know, that he didn't invest in those nine months. He didn't invest a whole lot of marketing dollars. Like if if I want to get into this now because my real estate business is getting slow people are not selling as many homes today with with people not leaving houses although i know homes are still selling my wife's team actually happens to be having their best month they've ever had but how do i jump out of this um 
and not necessarily jump out of what I'm doing, but add on the iBuyer, Gary, yeah. what's the best way to do that? What would I need to do if I've never stepped my foot in it? Yeah. Well, it's a, it's a really great question. And I can, I can say, um, specifically what a lot of us are doing right now around it. Cause this topic is, is, uh, the one that we're having. So it's a perfect question. Um, <clears throat> the, the opportunity in my mind is, especially for agents, would be to be able to, in this market, to be able to find sellers that are probably panic selling a bit because there is a lot of panic. There are a lot of people that are glued to the TV. So there's a lot of people right now that are going to be glued to the TV in panic and fear and not doing anything. And a lot of us uh, entrepreneurs, teams, business owners are saying, hey, this is not a time to do that we're actually going to a uh, get our expenses in line, make sure that we're, you know, our expenses are all in line with, uh, with, with, with uh, a change in the market. That's number one I'm seeing. Uh, number two is <clears throat> how do we actually reach those sellers? And um, a lot of us are actually using uh, the off market approach. So like a, a company like realestateinvestor.com, we're doing, um, a heavy amount of direct mail. I think we've done almost 50 million pieces of direct mail as an, as an example. And, um, and so we're having a lot of success with that. We're also doing um, cold calling. So we're able to take the same types of uh, targeted mailing lists. Um, and I can even go into that in a little bit of detail. And then we're pulling the phone numbers. It's called data stacking. We have a tool that, that our team does that or, or, or we offer it to our clients where they can actually pull phone numbers and provide it over to a professional team that's very, very good on the phone, especially scripted at this time because with you know, sensitivity and be able to talk to sellers who are interested in receiving offers for properties. So now, do, it, you, do I need to provide you with that list or do you guys have that list? Either. Yeah. Either. A lot of our clients coming to realestateinvestor.com, uh, they see us as the expert because, <clears throat> I mean, we've been doing this direct response, direct mail forever. So we have the mailing lists. Um, we have a, a two of them primarily. And, but we have clients like Jeff Cohn. He has his own list on top of ours. They have uh, their own mailing list. And so they'll provide it to us. And then our team has the ability of managing it and uh, making sure making sure it's you know it's going out most effective etc and then we're also doing cold calling and then more importantly as those leads come in <clears throat> it is the the follow up is absolutely the key it is um, less than 3% of the initial calls are, are are where profits come from it's it's almost all through follow up through follow up text messages and keeping kind of front top of mind with the seller we do we do that, we have a system and a team that can actually do all that phone follow-up and scheduling of, of appointments for our clients if, if they need it. Um, now, the opportunity that I think is presentable is do what the iBuyers, um, the iBuyers were able to come in with an instant offer. So if you're an agent and you can come in with an offer to a seller to buy the house at one price today, that's going to be highly attractive for a lot of these sellers. And I can explain why, or if they don't want that being able to give them an opportunity to list the property. And so now you're really coming in as a solution provider, an expert solution provider that says, Hey, you know, we're not just, you, you know, we can offer you multiple solutions. And, 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 and so that I'm seeing a lot of opportunity. Now, if you don't have the money today to buy yourself, you could in your local market find those cash buyers um, or those, those, those particular buyers that are looking for either rental properties because there are a lot of them. A lot of people right now that have been sitting on cash have been waiting for this opportunity. And as an agent, you could have you know, your Rolodex of people ready to go. And so you can either bring somebody in right then and there to make an offer or you can actually list the property and take a traditional listing. And I think, I think the market is absolutely perfect for this. So if I, if I don't have the cash and I want to bring somebody in as a partner to, to invest in this, how do I make my money? Typical, it, a, couple, a couple ways. Usually you might actually get the, the traditional listing. I know a lot of cash buyers will build uh, their six or sometimes even higher than 6% commission or their fee structure into the deal. 
so that you'd get paid right out of escrow. Because all of these deals all go through escrow. It's all traditional. It's just coming in instead of having to wait and looking for kind of a retail FHA, you know, traditional buyer, you may be coming in with somebody that is looking for a property that needs work, right? 54% of all the properties last year, according to our records, were uh, investor types of properties, right? Not all properties are perfectly, you know, beautiful kitchens and remodeled. They might have, you know, a lot of work. And so what investors out there, cash buyers are typically looking for properties that are value add properties where we can come in and, you know, improve them and either put them into a rental pool for a long-term investment or possibly fix them up, turn them and, uh, and, and profit off of that. So I think the agents that are able to come in and make those multiple offers to a seller um, are going to, are going to do really well. Yeah, it's, it's it's one more opportunity to get in front of people, right? Right. If, right. if you're going to give them an option, I'm ha happy to sell your home. We're also, we'll, you know, we'll give you a ca instant cash offer if if you want, right? Let me come Absolutely. in and see it. So it, it's a it's a way to get in front of the customer. Yeah. Um, now let me throw one more thing. Now this is some this might go over a lot of people's head, but I will tell you from an investor perspective, what we've seen in the last cycles where there are a lot of sellers that have properties that are uh, like a lot of burned out landlords uh, and properties that have been inherited that have a, a, a huge amount of equity. And right now, a lot of those sellers are, um, are worried about the banks. So this is a, historically, a lot of us investors will also come in with a potential um, seller financing option as a, hey, we could actually buy it at even a higher price if you'd be willing to carry back. And so a lot of investors are now going down the path of, hey, I can give you a cash offer, let's say a $100,000 cash offer, we could list the property, and here's what we think, or we could actually, you know, you become the bank, and you're going to get an income stream over the long haul. And, 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 and so sellers are actually, there's a lot of people because they're worried about, oh, if I sell, where am I going to put the money? Do I put it in the bank? Is there going to be a potential issue there? And so now it just it creates even another dynamic and opportunity. So again, if I if I'm not in this business, Gary, and I want I want to be, I, I mean ultimately maybe I'm just making a commission, maybe I'm I'm wholesaling, but maybe I'm doing, you know, maybe I'm finding ways to get an investor behind me, get hard money you know, then go replace that hard money with an actual uh, investment loan from a bank. Tell us, I mean, how, how would you go about building up this opportunity if you were just getting into it and didn't have, you know, large amounts of cash sitting around? Yeah, well. Um, how, do you, how do you build that up the quickest so you can really capitalize on this market? Because there is a, a key opportunity today. Yeah. And so, did I already miss it? Right. Yeah, yeah, and I think no, the opportunity is right in front of us uh, right now. I think that if you don't have cash, if you're sitting on cash, this is you know what is what it was. It Warren Buffett said that you actually want to buy when people are panicking and in fear, yep. and yep. when there's huge amounts of optimism is usually when you want to sell, right? <laughs> exactly. And so, with houses and with with stocks, right? Right. Um, the if you have cash right now. Um, there is, I, I see into the future, we're going to probably see a, an adjustment. We've had a massive seller market. I think we're going to be transitioning from my perspective into more of a buyer market because historically some of the money from the banks, the cheap financing sort of starts to disappear and that's yet to be seen. But if you're brand new, let's say you have cash so opportunity to, you know, actually build income streams off of, you know, buying. Uh, if you don't have any cash, you can actually find in your local market a handful of the people that are looking for properties. And it's not very hard. Most of them are on Facebook and LinkedIn. So you can find the real estate investor in the local market, interact with a handful of them. Typically, if you're an agent, what we've found is you can have an agent and you'll have one or two or three buyers in your market that are looking for 10 or 20 or 30 or 50 properties over the, the next year. So you don't have to have a huge buyer pool um, if you're brand new. You need a couple of buyers that are, that are interested. And they'll usually teach you as an, as an agent 
they'll say, hey, here's what I'm looking for. I'm looking for this type of product, um, three bedroom, two bath, these price ranges in this type of area. And here's how I typically will make my offer. So uh, an, 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 an agent will pretty much know like where they need to be, right? They can go out right. very quickly in three minutes to value the property and say, okay, I know my cash buyer will pay this amount. And, and then if they're talking to the seller, they're br bringing that off, you know, a direct, a direct contract offer uh, from that buyer. Um, I know guys like, guys like um, a lot of us who are agents, we may, be, we may be coming in as the company to buy it, and then we may assign that contract to somebody else. And, uh, right. and that's, a lot of, that's, that's kind of a, a hybrid. And I, I may be getting way too down the rabbit hole for, for people. If you've been enjoying Grit, please help us continue to grow the channel by leaving a five-star review and sharing it with a friend. Now back to Grit. Um, one of the questions I have, you talked about you think it's shifting to a buyer's market. And, you know, it's going to be different all throughout the U.S., but I know here in the Utah market, we have so many tech companies moving in, even from the Bay Area. So they're leaving you and coming to us. Uh, and we have so many startup tech companies, such as Sisu, right? I mean, we've right. been around for about three and a half years now, uh, that there's a huge inventory problem, right? You can't find houses anymore. There's not enough land to, to build and buildings getting out west. So, so it seems like that, it, the difference between 08 and today was in 08, there seemed to be a lot of reasons like... Um, you know, getting loans just based on telling people what your income is, right? There, there were a lot of, and the problems with the economy, whereas we haven't seen that up until this COVID virus, right? So right. do you see a long-term buyer's market coming here? What, what do you really think is going to happen? Personally, I, I do. I actually think we are going to see a, a correction, a short-term correction on price. And then with the printing of money that's going out of control there, what are they talking about? A $1.5 uh, trillion dollar stimulus package, a stimulus package, where does that go? It typically leads to inflation, which means you want to be sitting on assets. So I see a short term uh, pressure going into a buyer's market with, with uh, inventory, S starting to see a lot more inventory. Um, and, and then, so buying opportunities for the investors or the agents that also want to be investors. And then, so decrease in price initially. And then once this thing gets back to normal, you know, a rush uh, back into much higher prices. Yeah. So, you know, if we look at other countries as well, you know, if you go over to China, if you go over to India, most properties are not even obtainable for the common person. Um, when I, before COVID, before COVID-19, just a few weeks ago, um, I, I, the number that I, that I heard was like 64 to 67% of the population could afford a median priced house, right? Mm -hmm. Now, if we look over the last 50 years, the, the real number, the average has been closer in the forties, the 40 to 42% range, right? So I think over time, over the, you know, and when I say like the next 18 months, I think massive buying opportunities, really good deals that are going to be coming, and then massive appreciation. And which means the dollar gets deflated, but you want to sit on cash assets. Uh, you want to sit on assets, which would be like properties. So you see, and I, and I really respect and appreciate your opinion here, you see this being more like what happened in 2008, where it's going to take a year and a half to two years before prices jump back up. Whereas I think a lot of people, and you know, I'm, we're all reading a lot right now, right? right. Everybody's got their opinion. Uh, a lot of people think that this is maybe more of a three, four month thing we're going through and the virus goes and prices are back up and the market's back on fire. So time will tell, right? right. But, but yeah, so what, what advice would you have for us um, knowing what you do? I mean, you've obviously given us a lot of advice, but um, just how long do we wait, right? I mean, you, you're like, jump on this now, prices are going down. You think prices are gonna stay down though for 18 months. So that would give somebody yeah. time to really build and, and create a business yeah. in this space. Yeah, 
So <clears throat> first off, I have no crystal ball, right? Yeah. And, 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 and we're also in, in some uncharted territory, but history, history is a wonderful footprint yes. to what, you know, to the future. And so I just look at the history, you know, real estate has been a seven year cycle for over a hundred years. Uh, 2001 to 2008. In fact, it was 9-11 to the mortgage uh, crash. Oh, if we go back all the way to the founding of the Federal Reserve back in the early 1900s, and we look at those cycles, it's been a seven-year cycle. It's been a seven-year cycle almost pretty darn close to the day. We're, we're kind of at year 12. Um, so I've actually been pretty vocal on the downturn market. Uh, a lot of people, if you know, if you listen to any, if, if anybody listens to my podcast, they'll hear me over and over again about the market correction. I, I don't think I've done a podcast out of the last two hundred where I haven't talked about the coming of the turn. Um, every every end of the cycle has been euphoric, and uh, which means everybody's talking real estate. It's the hot topic, and then there's the flushing out. And so I'm just looking at the patterns historically and what we've seen. And there's been a lull of 18 months uh, where real estate is not really popular, but people are making a massive amount of money. It's that 18 month window where there is that transition of wealth. What typically happens that I've seen over these, these turns is you do see uh, people that were actually in retail and that were buying at the peak of the market, they, they, they get hit pretty hard. So the people that have been buying uh, especially people who are sitting on a bunch of rehab projects, maybe uh, because of cash flow issues and this lull in the market. And that creates <clears throat> massive buying opportunities, right? Also, the other thing that I've seen is that the cash um, sort of disappears. We just saw it with the institutional iBuyers, where yeah. a lot of that money is now frozen, yeah. right? So if $3 trillion immediately disappears from the market, that was the biggest uh, competitor for all of us buying houses, that means we're, that's $3 trillion not available, which means there's buying opportunities. That usually means that it becomes a buyer's market, which usually means better pricing. <laughs> yes, exactly. Right? So, it, so that, that's why I think people that are sitting on the sidelines right now, uh, this is the time to be actually you know, you know, getting our, our expenses in line first, but you know, not being idle. I think this, this, this is an opportunity to get in. Um, I, I will tell you for me personally, I'm not buying right now. I am finding properties. We're making offers. Uh, a lot of us are making offers, but I'm, I have cash buyers that I am turning properties over that are, that are looking for properties right now. They've been going crazy because they're, 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 they're buying. So we're finding sellers that actually do, maybe they've been waiting and they've been, but, but now all of a sudden the sellers are like panic selling and they're like, okay, I'm ready to go. So we're picking some of those up. Some of the sellers we're getting owner financing with and uh, putting those into a rental pool. And we're getting really good rates from the sellers. I mean, look, the, the, the rate, what is it? The rates are almost negative right now. So some of the sellers, you know, they want the income stream, but you know, a lot of them are, are not taking like, I, I got I got three deals in the last couple of weeks that were zero interest financing from the seller. Mm. Right. That's so great. yeah. So I, I think this is a fantastic time. Um, I think that, you know, I think especially for people we'll be looking back in two or three years and, and we're going to be seeing like, I, I, I personally, I think that a house that's 200,000 could be 500,000 in six or seven years. We go back to 2008, I look at the house I'm living in, uh, we actually sold our, we sold, we liquidated before the 2008 market. I bought our primary residence as example in 2010 that doubled in price. And if we kind of look at when they were printing money, which they've done a massive amount of printing money over the last decade because of the crash, yeah. a, ga a gallon of milk, I what did we look at? A, a loaf of bread has like quadrupled in price. That's called inflation. Yeah. So, so, you know, rent, that also would mean rent skyrockets too. And um, in a lot of areas that, that, that uh, because I think that, you know, assets, uh, the assets become valuable and skyrocket, but the value of the dollar goes down. Yeah, you were talking a few minutes ago about the, 
the number, the, the person that gets hit the hardest is the person that's bought all these properties and is sitting on these rehab properties. And that's true if they don't have the cash, but if they do have the cash, couldn't they just turn those into rentals? And I mean, still a great opportunity, even if they paid top dollar, if the rental income pays for the property and makes sense cash flow wise, it's still a great, still a great move on their part, right? Yeah, for sure. Now I wanna also share a little interesting thing I'm hearing everywhere and I'm seeing it myself, but there are a lot of people that are already like, you know, talking about not being able to make rent right now. So mm -hmm. a lot of the, a lot of the investors, and that's another thing that a lot of these landlords, right? They're getting calls from their tenants and they, they have, you know, you know, lots of equity in their properties. And now all of a sudden, let's say somebody has got three or four properties they've had for 20 years and they're getting called by all the, the tenants saying, hey, I'm not gonna be able to make next month's rent. And those deals, those are opportunities for all of us because those sellers are gonna wanna liquidate. Yeah, uh, I, I, I've heard this recently. I don't, re I don't remember where I heard it, but it was that the average, it was on a, a podcast I was listening to, the average household in America has like less than $4,000 cash. I know, isn't that crazy? And, that, yeah. and, and by the way, less than 4,000 in cash and uh, the amount of debt that most yeah. people have is, it's, in, it's, it's insane, right? It's like people have been buying cars and living on. Yeah, one so, of the so, so basically they have one month maybe of expenses stored up. Yeah. And that's it. So, so if they're not getting paid anymore, if they're, people are losing jobs or not getting paid today, how are they going to, how are they going to do that? Right. There's, yep. there's going to be a major crisis like you're talking about. Yeah. So, you know, big picture, I think this is an incredible opportunity. I think sellers are going to need solutions. Uh, they're going to want to, you know, they're, they're going to need a lot of help. The agent market and the investor market, I think is, is a, is a great opportunity where we can come in, have compassion with the sellers, give them multiple op options that whatever fits their need and make a great living, a great uh, in, you know, opportunity for some of us that are buying, we'll be able to buy great properties as well. And, um, and I think that I'm, I'm nothing but optimistic in terms of the real estate side. I'm a little bit nervous in terms of the rest of where the world goes, right? But yeah, um, the economy. The economy, but I think, I think this is, being on the real estate side right now is not a bad thing if, you have, if, if, you're, if you're prepared uh, into this transitional market. Yeah. And I, I think an advantage that the real estate agent has as well, and in some places they're not able to go sell homes today, but that's going to be a short term thing. They haven't lost their job, right? They can still go sell a home. I know if somebody needs to go sell a home, they could go sell a home, you know, in, in a week or two. So yeah, I so, just call, I just spoke with, I have a, I do a, a lot of lending as well. First position, sort of traditional private money lending. And I, the, 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 the deals, the borrowers that I get come from hard money lenders. So mm -hmm. I actually spoke with one of them yesterday morning and they're crazy. They basically said that they've got $110 million uh, that they've actually, all investors like me that are giving them money for deals. And they said that their business is booming right now. There is a lot of hard money um, available. And so, you know, for those people that want to get in, the opportunities are there. Yeah, uh, for sure. So it, just uh, before we wrap up here with a few final questions, maybe just share with us, how do I take advantage of that hard money? If I'm in the real estate space, I mean, the, the great thing about the real estate agents is they have the biggest advantage of finding these homes, right? And so now how can they take advantage of that and leverage that and create wealth for themselves uh, using somebody else's hard money? Yeah. Yeah. Usually the market, there are, there are the national providers like lendinghome.com that's had billions of dollars that they've been funding on a monthly basis at pretty low rates. That money has not completely disappeared. There's typically a uh, more private lender, more traditional hard money lenders in each of the markets around the country. They're not that hard to find. That's typically on Facebook, uh, real estate clubs or, um, uh, meetup groups, online meetup groups, or LinkedIn. You can usually type in a private lender and you can find them. Um, that's, they're, they're, they're usually visible because they are looking, you know, they're, <clears throat> a hard money lender usually doesn't have their own money. They're usually using 
uh, other, it's called trusted investors. So uh, like my in-laws as an example, like me, even my mom, we, you know, we love to be able to put money and be, really be the bank. You know, instead of it being Wells Fargo, it's, it's me, Gary Boomershine, yeah. right? Yeah. As, and, and I'm getting a nice return, uh, rate of return, and a bit of a hedge against inflation in the banks as well. And so there's a lot of that money that uh, the, all the, uh, think of the amount of 401k and IRA money, $13 trillion from what I uh, last heard. And so they typically, some of that money will go to the hard money lenders and then the hard money lenders are working with investors all over the country. So you can, if you're looking for that money, it should be accessible in almost every market. Lending home would be one of the, the national ones that, that we use. I think they're, they're in more than half of the country. Um, and then, and then the, the, the local, I have a couple, like there's three in, in my market that have between the three of them, I think they have like $350 million out at any one time. Okay. So that, that money is definitely available. I think, I think the, the, the hard money lenders will, will, will have even more money. The ones that have been lending properly, um, where they've, they've been, been saving up for this day, right? They have, they have a lot of the hard money lenders remember what it was like in 2008 and so they've been you know their fundamentals are typically they're funding at you know 70 to 75 percent of the uh, purchase price sometimes they'll do after repaired value and um and, and that might adjust a little bit as we see the market unfold but that's a great source of money yeah gary it's uh just Thank you so much for your time and, and sharing this knowledge with us. Uh, so many people in this space, in the real estate space, definitely want to migrate into what you're doing and just haven't known how to get there. So um, just want to ask you a couple of questions and I'll get your contact information, let people know how to get a hold of you and your company, because your company is obviously going to give me the means to be able to do that without having to go create all those expenses. So. Um, What's your favorite book or, or favorite source of learning? Where do you spend your time learning? Yeah, gosh, I am such an avid reader. <laughs> I usually am reading three books at one time or audios. So Traction uh, by Gina Wickman is probably one of my favorite books that I've read over the last couple of years. That and is, is that very, an investment book? It's, it, it's, it's actually a, uh, an entrepreneurial business manager book of building a business uh, and an execution model. So that's one of my favorites. That's real popular. It's not a real estate investor book, but it's a small business owner book. Um, I'm huge on teams. I've got over 125 people working for me. And I have uh, uh, in, in, in three, three continents, actually. Uh, we're large team in the Philippines, large team in India. And so I've been reading. I love, uh, we've built an incredible culture. We're, we're people first. More than anything else, we're fully distributed, so I have no office. And the book that I am the big fan of is called Multipliers by Liz Wiseman. And it's a wonderful book on building teams and a management style. Multipliers is how do you actually have an abundant mentality and how do you get producers within your organization? And um, I think that Liz Wiseman does such a great job. Uh, I, I'm Attract a huge multipliers. Yeah. And of course, most of us, uh, most, a lot of people on the agent side, I'm a huge Gary Keller fan and, uh, his, his, uh, <coughs> the, um, uh, my one thing, one thing or millionaire yeah. real estate. Yeah. Yeah. The one thing I actually just, uh, interviewed them. Actually the guy who wrote the book for, for, for Gary, uh, I just did a podcast with him a few weeks ago. But the one thing, I, I live my life um, entrepreneurially. Um, I have a 5 10 3 rule. So I wake up at 5. I don't start my business day until 10. That gives me five hours of personal time. And during that time, I come up with my one thing. What is the one thing that I'm going to do today that's going to move the marker in my business? And I do that before anything else. And then the three is, uh, those are three hours I run in, in my business uh, as a CEO. And so that's my, my working time that I'm available is three hours. So that's what I've been doing for probably the last two years. And then I- I love that. Yeah, so that came from Gary, Ke Gary Keller and the one thing. Yep, great, okay. Uh, what's your favorite place? Maui. 
Maui. Okay. We, we, yeah, we have a we have a rental property in Maui, and uh, we're hoping that doesn't get canceled because we're we've got a I've got I actually was there for uh, I went over there by myself every year I do a sabbatical and actually literally my wife my wife said she goes it's really hard for me to tell my friends that my husband the entrepreneur went on a vacation to Maui without me <laughs> so but I usually do a sabbatical every year Maui is my place. Yeah, that's great. And uh, just, I love, I love it. They, they do have Maui on lockdown though, heavily right now. Not even the beaches. Are really? Mm -hmm. Really? Okay. Um, and what's your favorite thing to do in your personal time? I am an avid uh, health and wellness guy. So I, I work out. I actually lost, I think over the last couple of years, 40, 45 pounds and huge in the nutrition. So like the, even this morning, even with everything, I said, you can take my liberty, but you can't take my gym. So I have a small uh, gym that's like with a private personal trainer that I go see uh, pretty much every morning. My wife goes there and even my COO, I, uh, that's part of our perk for our business. And so they haven't been able to close the private gym down. <laughs> okay. Good. I just, just got back doing my workout today. How far, how far is that from your house? Well, if I had to, I could walk or rollerblade is more likely. I'm a big rollerblader. But. Yeah. Cool. All right. Well, I know you've got a hard stop here. Uh, how can people get a hold of you, Gary, uh, you and your business? What's the best way to do that? Yeah. The business is realestateinvestor.com, singular, realestateinvestor.com. I have a podcast, uh, the realestateinvestor.com huddle that I do that we've been active for the last couple of years. I love interviewing, um, gosh, people around the country that are doing really great stuff in their business. And got a lot of information on the realestateinvestor.com site. And if people are looking for uh, an expert solution for finding deal flow, specifically finding buyers and sellers in this market, uh, we've got a great solution, both of technology and of resources uh, that I provide over 600 people around the country. So realestateinvestor.com and lots of information there for everybody. And then what about on the lending side? Are you looking for more people now to be able to disperse funds to, or are you pretty much set in that area? You know, I, uh, I'm, mostly, I'm mostly in my local market. Okay. Just, I, I wanna be in a market where, uh, that I can actually see and touch. So probably not as much. If somebody's in the Bay Area, yes. But yeah. I'm, I'm, right now I'm not funding outside. That's one of, I've been lending for a long, long time. And so it's like one of my little pieces of the footprint is I want to be, I want to be driving distance from whatever I'm funding. Yeah. Okay. Makes sense. Something else we can learn from. So Gary, thank you so much for your time. Great spending time with you today and uh, hope to, hope to see you around at some of these events here in the near future. I know uh, my wife and I, again, as we started talking about, just started buying properties uh, about four months ago. So yeah, anyway. it's been, been great. I appreciate it, Brian. I'm definitely going to be, Jeff wanted me to get in contact with you on getting your software uh, component a part of realestateinvestor.com too. So oh, well, uh, yeah, so just reach out to me on email. I think it's just brian at csu.co. Let's get together on that right away. Excellent. All right. Thank okay. you, everybody. Thanks, Gary. Thank you for joining us on our podcast. If you have an interest in a free seven-day trial of CSU, go to csu.co. S-I-S-U dot C-O. Make sure that you use the coupon code GRIT, that's G-R-I-T, to waive all your setup fees and receive a 10% discount on your subscription. If you enjoyed listening to this podcast and want to subscribe, search GRIT, the Real Estate Growth Mindset on iTunes, Spotify, or Podbean. And with that, we'll catch you next time. Take care.